today's lab is fairly complicated, and so I'm going to give you the rundown here. Um, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your Zoom keys are enabled on your computer. So you're going to go to the very, very top left corner, click on the Apple button. You're going to go to System Preferences, and we are looking for Accessibility. So it's in one of these little icons. you got to find it. Mine is right here, but you'll have to find yours. So double-click on Accessibility. On the left side where it says Zoom, make sure the box is checked next to Use Keyboard Shortcuts to Zoom. Okay? If that's true, then you can close your window, and you can hold down the Option and the Command key, and plus and minus keys will now cause your window to zoom and get really big and really small. Okay? That's going to allow you to collect good data. So that's step one here, enable zoom on your computer. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to download a video of a, cro of a uh, golf ball falling. Okay, this is a typo. It should be golf ball. So there's a link right here. What I need you to do is to click on that link with your alt click. So usually you click with the mouse button with one finger. So if you click with two fingers here, oops, and I missed it. So that, and that happens. So right here, I'm going to click with two fingers. It'll bring up a menu. One of the things is save link as. Okay, and that will download the file, and that's what we're looking to do. We actually have to download it. It's going to go into my um, downloads folder. Yours may or may not bring up a question asking you what you want to give it, but there it is. It is in my uh, downloads folder, and it opened in QuickTime. So it's just a video of a golf ball falling. It's not very exciting. Okay, but we're going to analyze that video. All right, so this is the one I opened by accident here. Um, if you are in Safari, when you alt-click, it's going to bring up a slightly different menu, and it'll say Download Linked File, and that'll download it to your Downloads folder. Okay? So that's step two. Now, we're going to use Logger Pro to collect distance and time data for the golf ball. So to get Logger Pro, you're going to hold down the Command key and hit the space bar and type Logger. And it should bring up Logger Pro app. If it doesn't, that means Logger Pro is not installed on your computer. The way you get it is you go to the tippy tippy top here, up here, and next to all your little memory resident icons, there's a little red um, thing that looks like a shell, maybe, I guess, I don't know. If you click on that, it will give you some options to install software. So this is called FileWave, and it's where you can install additional software that you might need on your computer. One of the options down here is Logger Pro, so scroll through the list. We are looking for a Logger Pro um, update. So they kind of go fast here. Uh, I'm gonna, over here, I click on all to make sure I can see them all. And Logger Pro update right there. I just passed it. There's two right here. There's Logger Pro and Logger Pro update. You want to install Logger Pro update. Once that installs, you'll have Logger Pro and you can continue in your lab, okay? So, we're going to run Logger Pro. So, I'm going to hit Command Space, type Logger, and it'll bring it up. That opens Logger Pro. And then these, these steps are in your toolbox in the um, very first page after the table of contents. So, you can go refer to those as we go along. But the first thing you want to do in Logger Pro is go to Insert Menu and go to Movie. So this will insert a movie. You will then browse to your downloads folder and you'll get the golf, the dropped golf ball movie that we downloaded and hit open. And that will insert the movie into Logger Pro. So we've got the golf ball right here. There's some tools in the bottom left corner that allow you to control the video frame. So a video is just a whole bunch of pictures every 30th of a second. You can flip through the frames one by one using the button on the left. And if you do that, you'll see the golf ball going down. You can go all the way back to the beginning, or you can just play the movie, and it's not very exciting. So I'm going to make sure I'm at the very beginning when the golf ball is at the tippy top. On the bottom right-hand side, there's a little bar here with three dots. That opens your toolbar. Your toolbar is on the right-hand side here. There are two things we need to do before we get started. The first thing we need to do is to set the scale. So I'm going to click on the fourth button down right here, which is Set Scale. And then I'm going to draw a line from the tippy top of the stick that steel is holding all the way to the bottom of the stick. And I'm going to tell the computer that that line is two meters long. That way the scale is set. 
The other thing we have to do is define a coordinate system. So the third button down in your toolbar over here on the right hand side allows us to set a coordinate system and I'm going to click on the ball in the first frame. That defines a coordinate system. That's zero, zero right there. Okay? All right. So now we are just about ready to go. I'm going to add my data points. I'm going to mark the location of the golf ball in each frame. So over here, the second button down, I'm going to click on Add Point. And if you hover over these, it brings up and tells you what it is. So it'll say Add Point in a little bit. And I need to click on the ball in every frame. Now to make sure I do this accurately, it would help to zoom at this point. So if you make your cursor go right here to the middle and you zoom in, so you hold Command, Option, and then push the plus key, your screen will zoom in. And you can click right on the ball. And when you do, it'll advance to the next frame. So it's a little hard to see when I'm zoomed in. But I just clicked on the ball, it left a blue dot, and now I'm on frame, the next frame. And so I'm just going to keep clicking on the blue, on the middle of the ball in every frame, marking the location of the ball as best I can and as accurately as I can. And what will happen is the computer will then figure out the location of the ball from the coordinate system and record the time, because every frame is a thirtieth of a second, and the location of the ball. Now the computer records the location of the ball in the X direction and the Y direction. At the very end, nothing happened when I clicked on it because I collected all my data. So now very carefully go over here and click on the data table. I'm going to make the data table wider. and I'm going to scroll to the left and you'll see here's the time. So we have zero seconds and then 0 0.01000 seconds. So these are all the times all the way up to a little more than half a second. And what we really care about is the Y position of the ball, okay? So I'm gonna go over here to the X position of the ball right here, and I'm going to Alt-click and uh, go to, let's see, Column Options. No, let's see where it is. I'm going to just go Cut. No, that didn't work. I'm gonna right, oh, there, yeah. So if you two-finger click, over here, you get a delete option. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I'll do undo. So I'm just going to click on there and go to data and delete column. I want to delete the X column. And I also want to go to data, delete column. I want to delete the Y velocity. So all we want is the time and the Y position. That's the data we extracted from the video file. This is like the breadcrumbs we left on the football field. Every 30th of a second, we have a record of exactly where the ball was as it fell. So we're just going to copy this data now, and we're ready to find a math model. So the last thing you're going to do is open a spreadsheet. So I'm going to go to a new spreadsheet here. I'm going to paste my data, and the titles don't come with it. So I'm going to have to make my own title. So this is time, and it was in seconds. And this was the position, and that was in meters, okay? Now, um, this is negative, and if that bothers you, you can go make them all positive, okay? So it might be a good thing to do to go make these all positive, um, because we really care about just how far it's fallen, not the fact that it's below where it started. Once you do that, you make these all positive. So I'm just going to do a quick little trick. I'm going to say that this equals that. And that equals that. Um, actually, that's a bad idea. So you can just go through in here and edit and make the signs all positive. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Okay. Then you're going to graph your data. So you're going to insert a chart. When you insert a chart, make sure you're looking at a scatter plot. And I think what you can see here is a parabola. And mine's upside down because I didn't make my, all my data points positive. But it's a parabola. And so that tells you that instead of graphing time and position, we need to regraph it. We're going to take all these things here and copy them and paste them. We are going to take time squared. So this is going to be time squared. And so we are going to take this number and say it's going to equal 
this over here to the power of 2. And we're going to copy that down. So here now is all my time squared. And just to get my positions positive, I'm going to tell the computer that this should equal this number over here times negative 1. And that'll make it positive. The ones that are negative will make positive. So now they're all positive. And so now when I graph it, I should get a straight line. So I'm going to insert chart this time. I get a nice straight line. And so now you just need to finish up using your toolbox. Make sure it's a scatter plot. On the x-axis, we have time squared. On the y-axis, we have position. You're going to add a trend line. So you remember how to do that. You're going to add a trend line. You can see that's a really nice straight line. You are going to use your uh, equation of the trend line to write the math model. And then you're going to fix your title and your subtitle and all those things to finish up the lab. And this graph is where you're going to make a screenshot to turn in. And this is for the golf ball. And then you're going to do it all over again for a croquet ball. Okay? So that's the lab. You might need to watch this video a couple times or kind of step through it. And you might need to make it nice and big so you can see the details if you're doing this at home. All right. Good luck.